Hello, my friends. I'm pretending like it's spring today and spending some time out with the chickens. We get a lot of questions about how we keep our chickens, and I just want to encourage you. A lot of you are probably buying chicks for the first time this spring. Maybe you're just getting started with chickens, or maybe you've already started, but you're inexperienced. I want to encourage you because there's a lot of information out there about how to do things right or what's wrong. And I just want you to relax. I want you to enjoy having chickens. So I had a friend of mine who's a new chicken owner call me the other day and ask me if she could feed her chickens a rotten tomato. And it made me laugh because I rarely think about that. We've been chicken owners now for 12 or 13 years. So we have some experience under our belts and it's not as complicated as people make it out to be. So I wanted to give you kind of a quick rundown of how we keep our chickens here, the things that I worry about, the things I don't worry about. So in terms of feeding our chickens scraps, we feed them everything, including meat scraps and bones. Chickens are omnivores. They eat grass and plants and seeds, but they also eat a lot of bugs. We feed our chickens pretty much every scrap from our kitchen except for onion peels and citrus peels, and that's simply because they won't eat them and they just make a mess in the coop. So I don't worry about moldy food or old food. I don't crush anything up. I don't dehydrate eggshells before I give them to them. I don't do anything like that. All the waste from our kitchen goes into a bucket and every day that bucket goes out to the chickens. It's really simple. On top of all the kitchen scraps, they also get a laying grain. This is a grain that we get from Azure Standard. Years ago, we made our own chicken grain when it still made financial sense to do so. Now, it's just as inexpensive for us to get a really high quality chicken grain as it is for us to make our own. So we don't mix our own feed anymore and instead we just stock up every month with our Azure order to keep a laying hen grain on hand. In addition to compost and a laying hen grain, we also give our chickens alfalfa pellets or flakes of alfalfa. Again, chickens are omnivores. Chickens like to eat leafy green things. That's why when they get out, they'll go for your vegetable garden and they'll start nipping at the leaves of all your plants. So this way it provides them with some of those green alfalfa leaves that they love to eat and it's really good for them. So we just try to think of keeping a broad diet for our hens. This I have found is really the easiest way to make sure you don't have any major nutritional deficiencies in your rations. So compost, laying hen grain, which is a nice high protein, and garden scraps as they're fit, and then some sort of greenery. In our case, this winter, alfalfa flakes. You'll notice that our chickens are not free-range chickens. They cannot be free-range chickens. It sounds very idyllic and very nice, and if we had a different style of farm, then it's something I would really like to do. But chickens are really difficult on the gardens, whether it's the vegetable gardens or the flower beds, they will destroy them. They poop everywhere, they scratch up seedlings, they eat back important new growths of stuff, and so they are not allowed to free range at our house. So instead what we've done is we've created a really nice big chicken run so they get access to scratching through the dirt, lots of sunshine, lots of fresh air. They have a nice corner of the farm to live in, but you'll see from the video that we built a 10 foot high fence with T-posts and chicken wire because they will fly over. We have a lot of chickens, so clipping their wings is kind of a, it's kind of a task we just don't stay up to date on very often. So I don't clip their wings. And instead we just have this nice high fence and we haven't really had a problem with them getting out other than when the door gets left open. So I don't really consider them, uh, caged chickens, but they're not free range chickens either. This is the best case that we have found on our farm to keep our crops really healthy and our gardens really healthy and keep the chickens contained, keep them safe and keep them from getting in trouble. Now, as far as inside the chicken coop goes, um, like many of you, maybe, especially if you're a new chicken owner, you sort of have this idyllic view of what your chicken coop will be like. Um, I can tell you that's not what it's going to be like. Those really beautiful coops that you see on Pinterest with like the fabric and the chandeliers, those are going to get disgusting very, very quickly. The reality of owning chickens is that they're really dirty, they're dusty, their feathers um, and dirt go everywhere and they poop over everything. It's just part of who they are and that's okay. 
But over our many different setups that we've had on our farm, we have found this one to be the best. These are just plastic nesting boxes that we got at our local feed store. And what's nice about them is you can lift them off the wall, knock them out, and then hang them back up and put fresh bedding in, which prevents you from having to clean out their nesting boxes constantly because they will poop in them. And then if you have an egg eater, um, then it causes all kinds of yolk and just, they get gross. They just get gross. And if you're going to have chickens, you just kind of have to accept that that's the way that it is. So instead of spending a bunch of time shoveling out our chicken coop, we instead do the deep litter method, which basically means we continually add fresh litter on top of the old litter. And this grows a kind of its own little ecosystem, its own little microbiome, which produces heat in that decomposition of the old litter. It sounds really complicated, but really it just means that instead of pulling the bedding out once it's dirty, you just continually add fresh bedding on top and that old stuff decomposes. This saves us a ton of time because you could literally be cleaning a chicken coop all the time. They get really dirty. Depending on what time of year it is and what our store has available depends on what we use for bedding. Sometimes we'll just rake up old chaff hay and use that as bedding. Sometimes we'll get straw or pine chips from the feed store. So it kind of just depends on what's available, what time of year it is. Pine chips are my favorite because they smell really nice. And I've seen some kind of commentary about the dust getting in their lungs and that causing problems. Maybe that's happened to some people that's, we've never had any issues with that. Pine chips always keep things really, really clean. And we've been really happy with them. Straw tends to get a little bit wetter and get a little bit muckier. It's not my favorite. So pine chips would be my bedding of choice. Now this year we're gonna try something fun and we're going to incubate our own chicken eggs. We keep a couple of roosters around to fertilize our eggs. To hatch eggs, all we really need to do is collect them and put them in the incubator and wait for three weeks. It's a pretty simple process. And incubators now, they keep it at the right humidity and they keep it at the right temperature, which is really lovely. So we're going to give this a go this year. It's been years since we've hatched our own and I'm really excited to see how it turns out. We have some really beautiful hens and we have some really great roosters that have really nice personalities. So I'm hoping for some beautiful, strong, healthy chicks. Every spring we have a couple of hens that will sneak out of the coop and go and hatch some eggs somewhere on the property and they'll inevitably come out with their little clutch in tow. So each year we end up with extra roosters. So how we handle this is we butcher them. Roosters, we let them grow out, get pretty fat, and then we will butcher them and use them for cooking. Now roosters can kind of have a bad rap like they're tough and we've never really found that to be the case. Whenever I'm cooking a rooster, I will put it into a large stock pot full of water and onions and aromatics and let it simmer over really low heat until the meat is just falling off the bone. Roosters make the best stock and have a really flavorful dark meat that's delicious. So when we're hatching our own eggs, we will end up with roosters, which obviously we're not gonna keep for laying eggs because only the females will lay eggs. But the males we will let grow out and that's a great meat source for our farm. So we are going to go get our eggs started right now in the incubator so that they will be ready to hatch towards the end of the month. And then we're going to cook a rooster together so you can see what that delicious meat looks like. I would like to thank Maiden for sponsoring today's video. You can save 15% off your first order of over $100 by clicking the link below. Maiden has now received over 100,000 five-star reviews, which is the most of any cookware brand. This is a pan that's a professional quality product, but that's really designed for the home cook. I know there's a lot of cookware out there for you to choose from as you stock your home kitchen. And as someone who cooks for a living, I can genuinely tell you that stocking your kitchen with these high quality Maiden products is a great decision. The Copper Saucier pan that I'm using today is made in France and modernized with a stainless clad interior. That means you never have to worry about retinning your copper and it can withstand temperatures twice as high. I use this on the stovetop and also in the oven. The lid comes in really handy for slow cooking meats. You can save 15% off your first order of over $100 by clicking the link below.